In this video, we're taking on the challenge of fixing this 1980s icon, the Texas Instruments Little Professor. This one, straight from eBay, was sold as spares or repairs, but with a clean battery compartment and good cosmetic condition, what possible horrors could be waiting for us on the inside? Before we dive into the fix, let's take a moment to appreciate the history of this nostalgic device. The Little Professor was introduced by Texas Instruments in 1976, and this is the same company that was known for other popular electronics such as the Speak and Spell. The idea was that it would be a fun, educational toy by designing it to look like a professor, but act like a reverse calculator, posing the problems and asking you to come up with the solutions. I know fun and education sounds crazy these days, but it was all the rage back in the 70s and even into the 80s, and so much so that over a million units sold in 1977, and, and Texas had uh, trouble keeping up with demand. The second version, uh, I'll, again, I'll put another photo up on here, was uh, released in 1978, and that moved away from the LED display to an LCD, and it also had a membrane keypad instead of the buttons. This version, which we have here, uh, was released in the 80s and it reversed back to its original kind of styling and yellow buttons, uh, just looks slightly different. So you can see here, it's got these buttons, but the layout has changed from the original. Later on, it used to come in a, a yellow like clamshell case. And then in the 2000s, there was a, a solar version. So let's have a closer look at this one and, and take an opportunity to have a look at the box. And then we'll pop some batteries in here and start doing some initial testing. So the box here, Texas Instruments Little Professor, five years and up. 5,000 different problems, not a calculator, and much more than a toy. It asks the questions, you give the answer, now with an animated display and extended battery life. Uh, and then what have we got on the side? More of the same bits and bobs, same, same information there. And then what have we got on the back? It'll correct your wrong answers. So I think it comes up with a number of uh, letter E's, I think, if you get it wrong. And then um, you've got on is I'm ready levels choosing the level difficulty here and then this is your times table functions don't forget your batteries don't worry we won't so nice to have the box and then we've got our little professor here in the hand a small item would have got on the back here texas instruments electronics hey, lovely springy clicky keys on here sometimes they can be terrible but they're really nice actually so that's an overview of everything. As I mentioned, this was listed as spares and repairs. So let's pop in a couple of batteries and see what happens. Okay, that's two batteries in. And it comes as no surprise that we are getting absolutely nothing at all. No obvious damage to the, uh, what, what did I say, the, the LCD screen or anything like that. and. See there, just as I, just as I, uh, we're already getting clues. So just as I banged the batteries out, and in fact you can hear hear something now. There's like a little bit of like crystalline stuff came out here. Uh, it looks like the kind of crystallized crystallization you get when batteries have corroded. And in fact, if we now look inside here, look down in there. So maybe there is corrosion, but it, it but it's not visible. So. There's only one way we're going to find out, and that's by getting inside this thing. Uh, with no obvious screws, it's either hidden underneath the pads, or it's just going to be a case of prying this open. So we'll we'll just I think we'll try and just pry the front off. See there how there's a little bit of a gap. Uh, for this stuff, I've got a couple of options. I have uh, the plastic ones, and I I also have the the metal ones. I think I'll actually try a metal one in this instance. So just pop in a part like that. Yeah, see, look, here's more of it coming out. Hopefully, not too bad. Yeah, look at that. So, see behind here. Don't know if best. I don't want to get this all over the the bench. So I've kind of. There we go. 
it's all behind there and then we can see that that has crept inside here so these are our battery contacts that are going to feed everything and I can see a little bit more on the ribbon on the other side so I think what I'm going to need to do is clean this up and also have a look in here and make sure it's not gone too far and damaged anything so first thing I'm going to do just off to one side is brush off some of this corrosion and then we'll bring it back in clean it up and, and have a look on the other side so that's the worst of it removed but it really has been eaten up quite badly this conductive material and you know we can test the conductive nature just with a uh, a multimeter and, and the continuity check so you'd imagine that this is something that can yeah carry um, a voltage through it and I wonder if any of it is still usable so you look at that pad there so was well, yeah so further down from the pad looks like it could be okay well, how are we gonna remove this section here let's have a look seems to be relatively straightforward because it just seems to be sat here although this is ribbon running across the top it's weird because you'd think this would come off the top but actually it's all of these are attached onto something at the back so there was Four, one, these four clips were the main ones holding it in uh, and then here's our pad so they're, so they're actuators rather than anything else and then that board yeah, then goes on to those bits onto the ribbon at the back hopefully these are going to be okay and we don't have to go and sort them out but can you see on the back of all of them it's like I don't know it's like they've been pulling away but hopefully there's enough on there this one here is a bit worrying We'll see. Let's see if we can get it working and then we can go back to that. So now we can see the full extent of the damage coming around to here. And then that would then follow down into here. So first thing I'll do is look to clean that up. What's sometimes nice when you're doing this is just to put in, again, you've seen me do it before, with the, with the bench power supply, we can at least put something in now and see if there is any sign of life if we can just get some power into this bit here and some negative into there so we're just going to need uh, three volts aren't we no no signs of life I was getting some fluctuations on the power but maybe we're not getting past these pads down here maybe they have come away very hard to open this up without doing any damage behind the pad as you'll see in a second so with age a lot of these pads have lifted off here so we're gonna have to just rejoin these although it's tricky when when they're here although if that's not going to anywhere that's not so much a concern but you can see for instance this one here that's lifted is, is that more of just it being a ground and I'm just wondering, so our power comes in down here, then it does go back up. So you should be able to check a few of the bits and bobs here, which we do. We should also get it running down, it looks like it goes to here, yeah. If I can at least repair this to start with, down onto here. So maybe a combination of some conducting tape and some some wire as well. I'll give that a go, I think I've got some. So um, I'm gonna give it a go, because I think in this instance we can have it kind of folded over nicely and then we can uh, go straight onto the front of it. So now when the contact is made there, just like this one, it's gonna transfer onto the other side. We just have to link up with this trace down here that's pretty badly damaged. I'm thinking with this, because it's so far gone, I'm just gonna get um, a piece of electrical wire out and try and attach it here and find a, a good part to attach it onto there first by cleaning up that wire a little bit more and then we'll take we'll try the con the um the conductive tape onto it there see i'm only i'm only on the trace let's trim down the side and start trying to use some cable and or some solder for a more effective finish Okay, so I've got this. At some point, I really want to get some thinner 
uh, cable or some of the that kind of wire that you can use but this is all I've really got with me today so I'll drip it back and then turn this inner part basically into 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 cable and run it run it down and then that almost becomes you see like a, a cable No idea if this is going to work, especially like soldering onto tape, but there's only one way to find out. I know this is looking terrible, but bear, bear with me. Let's see, let's see if we can actually achieve something. So there we go, we've got continuity now, it's going through there. I think I should at least be able to see something on the on the screen, and I'm wondering, you can see this sticky patch up here, and I'm wondering if we're missing a connection at the bottom. Clip holding that on there, yeah, and look at this damage here. So at least now that's off, we can check the continuity of everything running out up to the top and hopefully rule those out. So they're all good. Then we've got these ones coming out of the chip over here. Where do they even come from? I don't think solder on here is going to do any good. I mean, there's no way this is coming back to life now, right? Holy crap, do you see that? So, I've got direct power into the chip and I'm just trying to get this screen back onto here and look, you can the screen is now actually, if you get it in the right position you can actually get it to line up now. I don't think the keys will do anything. Did not expect that. So I'm going to take these hard bits off. Let's see what would happen if we go in down here. So at least it's flowing through uh, the keypad. Is it reacting to me or not? So we're putting power in. I think it's purely look that we're getting something here. I'm not sure about these pads. I would really appreciate this is genuinely, if, if someone could explain to me, should should these these ones here actually be attached to anything? Like, could I have taken the, like a jump over to this end bit? Or if someone could give me some information, I, I would appreciate it. But um, I, I am not going to be able to get this working. So it's a fail. We've had a look inside, we had a good go. And, um, so what let's go to the summary and so there we have it unfortunately the little professor did become a big nightmare and unfortunately in this video i was unable to get him working i guess there was one small silver lining which was amongst everything that i did we did actually manage to see something on that uh, lcd so we made a tiny bit of progress and i did some learning along the way and as i mentioned during the video if anyone's got any input for ways to tackle those pads, I'd be grateful. But, you know, it's it's equally as important to share my fails as it is my successes. I'm still very much learning as I go along, and I hope you still enjoyed my pain and suffering. If you did, please consider liking the video or subscribing to the channel, or maybe check out a video up here where hopefully I was a little bit more successful. And until the next one, all the best, take care, and see ya.